this derivation of the acceleration in the rotating and inertial frames is kind of the uh, feather in the cap for this chapter, chapter 9. And um, so what we want to try and do is to try to relate the accelerations. In the last concept we related the velocities, we now want to try and relate the accelerations. So what I've done is um, replicated for you concepts 9.3 and 9.4. This is for a general vector Q, and for 9.4 we'd set Q equal to R and related the velocity in the inertial frame to the velocity in the rotating frame plus omega cross R. Now in order to do accelerations, what I'm going to do is put set Q equal to the velocity in the inertial frame and plug that into equation 9.3. So Q now is going to be this velocity. So we'll get an acceleration. Let's see if we can manage it. There's a d by dt <coughs> That's this d by dt uh, in the inertial frame. And then we have q, which is dr by dt in the inertial frame. <coughs> and it takes care of this term. Over here, d by dt in the rotating frame, that's this d by dt, and now we need q, which is dr by dt, in the s naught frame, plus omega cross q, but again q is this dr by dt at s naught. All right, now my next step is to apply equation 9.4, which tells me what dr by dt is in the inertial frame. Plug that in here and here. So that'll be d by dt in the S frame, and now I'm going to use equation 9.4 to replace this dr by dt in the inertial, in the inertial frame with this mess here. Okay, dr by dt S plus omega cross R. So this thing in square brackets is what's given by equation 94, <coughs> plus omega cross, and again in square brackets we're going to give, we're going to put this equation 9.4 in here, all right, that looks like your worst nightmare, and I, I don't blame you, but we're actually almost there. This guy here is a derivative with respect to t in the inertial frame, and another derivative with respect to t in the inertial frame. That's the second derivative in the inertial frame. So that's d squared r dt squared in the inertial frame. That's the acceleration in the inertial frame. Happy day. And then over here, I'm going to have a d by dt in the rotating frame operating on dr by dt in the rotating frame. Well, that's just the second derivative in the rotating frame. take care of that term. Then we have a d by dt of omega cross r. And 
and that's a d by dt evaluated in the s frame of omega cross r. That takes care of this term. Then we'll have an omega cross dr by dt in the s frame. That's that term. And then finally, omega cross omega cross r. All right, I'm going to write this one more way and then we're going to look at it for a uniform circular motion. this term here. And in this next step, I'm going to assume that omega does not change with time. I'll give you a homework exercise that will, in, in which you will consider the effect if omega is actually changing with time, in which case it will have a time derivative. But now we're going to assume that omega is constant. And if omega is constant with time, then this deri time derivative of this product, we can use the product rule. It would be the first derivative of the first crossed into the second, plus the first crossed into the derivative of the second, which gives me omega cross, and the first term is zero, because the time derivative of omega is zero, and we'll have omega cross dr by dt as evaluated in the rotating frame. But notice that this is exactly the same as this term here. Omega cross dr by dt in the rotating frame. So we actually, these two terms combine together, assuming that omega is a constant, and we get two omega cross dr dt plus So that is the relationship between the accelerations. It's, I think you'll agree, a lot more exciting than the relationship between the velocities. Let us apply this in the special case of uniform circular motion. The same scenario that we talked about before. And we an object that's mass m that's rotating in a circle in uniform circular motion. Its speed is constant, and now we're interested in its acceleration. Well, um, certainly dr by dt. Let me let you say what that is. Well, let's say if it's positive, negative, or zero. dr by dt is the velocity of this ball as seen by the rotating observer. You say, well, I think that's zero, and I say, yeah, you're right. Because that rotating observer sees that r vector always pointing in the x direction. The r vector is not changing. So that's just plain zero. So that kills this term right off the bat. And then I would ask next what d squared r dt squared as seen in the rotating frame would be. So that's the question about the acceleration of this mass. 
we're looking at it from the point of view of an observer that's in a frame that's rotating with it. So that observer who's sitting on this on this axis, an x-axis, is looking at that mass and he's saying, well, it's, its position is always the same. It's just two meters ahead of me. Its velocity is zero. Its acceleration is zero. It's not accelerating. Velocity, we don't have a velocity, can't have an acceleration. This is going to be zero. That kills this term. We're left with only one term in this particular case. It's omega cross omega cross r. Let's figure out the direction of that. Here is uh, omega is out of the board, r is in this direction, omega cross r is in this direction. We worked that out in the last example. Now we need omega cross omega cross r. Well, here's omega. And there's omega cross r. Let's place them tail to tail. Here's omega. There's omega cross r. I'm going to cross this vector into that vector, and I get a vector that goes this way. What direction is it pointing in? It's pointing toward the center of the circle. So we see that d squared r, dt squared, as seen in the inertial frame, equals omega cross omega cross r. And that points inward. You say, well, that's all well and good. I've never seen that before. And I say, yes, you have. Take the magnitude of both sides of these. This will represent an acceleration. And this guy over here, the magnitude of omega cross r, is omega r. And then the magnitude of this will end up with, when you take magnitudes, omega squared r. This is the centripetal acceleration. Points toward, it's the center-seeking acceleration. Its magnitude is omega squared r. If you don't believe that, then just remember that v naught is omega r. So you can take one of these omegas and that r, and let's see, now actually what we want to do is solve this for omega. It will be v naught squared over r, and plug that in here, and we'll have v naught, I'm sorry, omega is v naught over r. Plug that in here, we'll get v naught squared over r squared times r is v naught squared And that's the one that you saw in elementary physics, that the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r.